Imagine being tucked into bed for a long night's sleep without a care in the world, dreaming about what new adventures you and your family would go on over the weekend. That's exactly what was on my mind when my dad rushed in and woke me up. Grayson, Grayson. What? I need you to follow me. Wake up, right? Come on. Okay. Right, let's go. Okay. I got Grayson. What's happening, Dad? Don't you have the edge? Yeah, what are we doing, Dad? Let's just get in the closet. What are we doing? Just get in the closet. Do we have flashlights? I'll get the flashlights, guys. Just get in the closet right now, please. My parents managed to get us to the closet, the safest place in the house. All of a sudden, everything went dark. A huge roaring sound was all around us. It sounded like a freight train was trying to wreck through our house. The trees were blowing. The sound of the wind and rain wrecking against our windows was nothing I had ever heard before. It sounded like our roof was getting ripped off. It was the scariest 10 minutes of my life. Tropical Storm Nestor was the 16th named storm of the 2019 Atlantic storm season. The storm was poorly organized, causing severe thunderstorms. At 10.57, a tornado warning was launched by Polk County. The tornado that hit my house ranged from an EF0 to an EF2. The EF scale determines how fast and how powerful the tornado is moving. For example, an EF1 tornado has a wind speed between an 86 and 110 miles per hour. An EF2 has a wind speed between 111 to 135 miles per hour. The tornado that hit us here in Polk County had a wind speed of up to 135 miles per hour. Winds at that speed can cause lots of damage. Here in Polk County, it ripped the roof off of Kathleen Middle School, flipped a semi-truck, and even let cows escape into my neighborhood. Thanks to the EMS, or Emergency Management System, my family and I managed to take shelter immediately because of my dad's phone and the TV, which were blaring with alarms. The next day, I talked with my neighbor, Dennis Nitschke, about his experience with the tornado that night. What was going through your mind when you heard the noises of the tornado? We knew it was coming. We were watching it on TV. Grabbed my wife's hand and said, we're going to the middle of the building where there are no windows and we're just gonna hunker down. So we went to the bathroom and all of a sudden we heard, sounded like a distant jet plane. Then it got louder and louder and louder and louder. And what people say is it sounds like a freight train. And that's what it was. It just sounded like a freight train. Do you know what a Doppler effect is? And, you're going away, and it, when it passed, you heard just the opposite. Right, exactly. It was a very interesting sound. And while all that was going on, we heard things banging against the house. My grill was turned over and something from the neighbor came through my screen on the lanai. So I heard things and I was really concerned how bad was the damage. I was frightened at the moment, but relieved after it was all over and nobody was hurt. Right, that's the most important thing. Yes, it so is. thank you, Dennis, so much for You got it. Put her today. there, bud. Okay. Thanks. Next time I'm gonna interview you. Okay. okay. Next, I checked in with another neighbor, Ram Sidharam. He had an up-close encounter with the tornado that left some pretty significant damage to his house. The sliding glass door, the trees really going wild. And then I saw the wind swirling coming towards the house. Before I could get up off my chair, the window behind me shattered, the oh. glass. I, then I came into the room and I felt the old roof. Old, I like The whole house was going up because it lifted part of the roof. Right. And then it was like a train coming towards us, and then the train hit. And then it went through and then came back and then hit the front of the house. That's when all the roof flew off, you know. So it was, it was, a, it was an experience. Yeah, seemed dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> dangerous, but it was over in two minutes. Two minutes and 40 seconds. That's the total time it lasted. But it looked like an eternity. When you came outside and saw the damage, what were you thinking? I saw my car. My car, which is parked over there, moved all the way over here. And then there was a big tree branch on top of the car. When your neighbors came and helped, just were you so grateful? Yeah, this is a great community. Right. In fact, I have to thank your dad. He was the first one who said, can I help you cut the tree? He said, yeah, sure. And then my next door, my neighbor, Mike and his wife, they joined in and they helped me cut the tree and a lot of cleanup, you know? So it's a, it's a, it felt great, you know? And when the cows came through, were you oh, just it, it was a lot of fun. That was the best moment. It was 
all the tension from the tornado went away when we saw all the cows, you know. Even the cows wanted to see right. the <laughs> damage, you know, it was fun, yeah. Okay, well, Ram, well, thank you so much oh, you're for very welcome, joining Jason. us in the room. Thank, thank you. you. Now that you know about the damage a small tornado can cause, ask yourself, are you prepared? Experiencing a natural disaster such as a tornado can be very traumatic. It is important that you and your family stay calm and react as quickly as you possibly can to ensure your safety. My parents were prepared thanks to the EMS, the Emergency Management System. EMS was sounding on our TV and our phones, warning us that a tornado was in the area and that we should take cover. Here are some things to think about. Number one, designate a safe and secure place in your homes with no windows, such as a closet or bathroom. A basement would be an excellent choice, but if you live in Florida, good luck finding one. Number two, once you get to your safe space, Cover your head and neck with a soft cushion or a mattress in case of falling debris. You may also want to keep an emergency kit in your safe space. In the event of a tornado or other natural disaster, it may take days for rescuers to find you. In that emergency kit, you should include a whistle to signal for help, canned food, bottled water, flashlights, batteries, medicines, and first aid supplies. Once a storm has passed and your parents confirm that it is okay to move around, you can begin cleanup. But be sure to avoid any broken power lines and fallen trees. And also, check on your neighbors and make sure they're okay. Well, I think that about covers it at home. But what happens if a tornado strikes at school? There is already a tornado plan at every school that ensures a student's safety. Let's take a look at some of our Southwest Spurs. They're working really hard, but a strong storm is moving into the area and they may have to take shelter at any minute. As soon as the tornado alarm sounds, students and teachers will move quickly but safely into their shelter locations. First, second, fourth, and fifth grade students will move into their building's interior hallways and duck and cover against the walls. Third grade students will shelter under their desk in the duck and cover position. Once the all clear is sounded, notice how calmly students reverse the process and return to their regular activities. At first, surviving a tornado seemed a bit like a nightmare. I mean, it was pretty scary. But after the days following Nestor's damage, I saw my neighbors come together in a way I've never seen before. I'll sleep well tonight knowing that my family has an emergency plan and supplies. And I know that my community and neighbors have my back.